So you have to, as you're thinking about this, it's not just about winning with the money. It's about figuring out what works for you. Someone asked me about balance. I think it's good that Pat said this. I said skill and balance. How do you define balance? I don't know. It, I can't define it the way my mother defined it. My father, much the same, came home from running a printing press, five o'clock, washed his hands, sat down, we had dinner at 5.30. And then he sat in his throne and he watched TV. Well, he, we didn't have that at those, those days. Got up, turned the channel, and uh, we watched the television. So, and we did the, exactly the same thing. Did the laundry, made sure the house was right because my dad was coming home. And he was a great man, and you know. But he, uh, again, they weren't uh, folks leading me. So I said to uh, to uh, Scott about ten months after I'd gone to Salesforce, we went out to have lunch, and he said, "Hey, how's it going?" I said, "Well, it's going great. I've had a great time. I learned a lot, but I'm not going to stay." And he goes, "Why not?" And I said, "Well, I'm not ever going to be the CEO." And he said. Oh, 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 he goes, that's founderism. This guy's wearing jeans. He, he's, he's going, I resemble that remark. I are a founder. Now, you know, he had 800 SAT scores, went to Harvard, um, and, uh, and then went to Stanford, and he is still one of the most whacked out guys I know. <laughs> Silly as a, as, a, as a sausage. And he said, uh, oh, they changed their minds. And I said, okay, but let's on to good news. I said, I just played golf, and I nearly hit a hole in one at this... Uh, at this uh, uh, playing with clients. And he said, wow, that's really great. What happened? I said, I hit a sweet little nine iron. It went right over the water. It bounced, it rolled, it hit right on the edge, hit the pin and rolled right back on the, on the edge. And he said, did you go down and did you jump on it? Did you, you know, did you blow? Did you pull the thing up like this? And I said, no, I got a great, I got a great birdie. And now he says something that's very important for all of you. To, he said, that's the problem with you, Salts. And I said, what's the problem? He says, why are you taking jobs where you're the number two guy? You should go take the number one guy. You know, take the, don't go and wait. Don't be the CEO, the maid and wait, but go do it. Now, this is a guy that is a locker room guy who named his children Maverick, Dakota, Scout, and lost one of them there. That I just want to tell you, after cars, I think, and, and, you know, uh, his dad was in the auto industry. I mean, we all have problems. <laughs> uh, I said, what would you do if you had a girl? He said, Mustang Sally. So anyway, but the point is, is that he was expecting me to dream big. Does that make sense? More stories than I could ever tell. But I just want to tell you, use your resources. Listen, even if you disagree, listen to those folks and push the edge. Breaking through, for me, was having a supportive partner. And I don't mean necessarily uh, a uh, uh, heterosexual partner. I don't mean a married partner. I just mean I had a great partner. And this is a guy that went through Oxy. How many of you are, are economic majors? Anybody? Oh my God, still studying the dismal science. Uh, <laughs> You know, he really used to make me mad because he could just remember anything and aced all the tests, Phi Beta Kappa, Magna Cum Laude, you know, blah, 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 blah. And, um, and I wasn't because I was always kind of screwing around. And uh, he went to Stanford, got his MBA, went into corporate finance at IBM as a vice president. And we have dual careers going. And no, neither one of us optimized on one particular career. What we did is we voted for Salts and Salts. That was our company. And uh, that really worked for many, many years, and extended community, and people who would let me go home early or would let us work. Because it didn't need, and, and by the way, IBM, I think at that point, where's Pat, was a, lot like, um, was a lot like the law firms that you're talking about. It was very staid. I wore, I believe it or not, I wore heels, a dress, a little bow. I looked like Melanie Griffin. Griff, is it Griffith or Griffin? Griffith or whatever. Um, and uh, you, for many years, because we had a dress code. And I had a friend, a male friend, who wore a blue Oxford nice shirt once in a suit. And someone, our boss walked up to him and said, uh, Joe, that's a great shirt. He said, thanks, I really like it. He looked really nice. And he said, I have a shirt like that. I wear it at home on weekends. So we were in very much a similar thing.
very structured. But there were people who took chances. And um, we didn't know what to do with people, executives who had children who wanted to work, at this point, even part-time. What did we do? I made it up. I have to tell you, I, I, um, I thought it was easier to beg for forgiveness than to ask for permission. Because I couldn't get HR to agree with what we do. We don't do that. Executives can't do that. They have to be here all the time. They have managers, blah, blah, blah. And so I just said, hey, Marie, just come in <laughs> part time and uh, we'll figure this out. And do you know what? She is one of, she's a top executive in their firm now. And she mentors folks and she's done some creative things in job sharing. That's not what we're talking about in, in this uh, situation. But by doing that, use technology to also catch up and be where she is. In uh, 1999, I got an offer to come to Sun Microsystems and to run software working for Ed Zander and Scott McNeely. IBM got pretty ticked off about it. My husband was there. This will never be caught on this stuff, but uh, his job disappeared suddenly, and so we were out here. We went to work for Siebel. Everything's good, and we now have our younger child at home. The house is perfect. The nanny is perfect. Everything looks perfect. We've come home at 8 o'clock, both of us. And she looked, our, our younger daughter looked miserable. And my husband, after all that time, took a chance to say, now I'm not saying this because we went mixed careers all that time, but at, at this point he said, you know what, this is your time. How can we tell our daughters to be everything they want to be when their mother isn't all that she wants to be? And he, he opted out of being an executive as a vice president and took care of our nine-year-old. Three years ago, he went back to school. I didn't know what he was doing. He said, I'm going to San Jose State. What are you doing? I don't know. I'm just taking some science courses. Um, he's, in his final, he's in the class of 09 as a uh, post bac student. Uh, he will be a uh, have a BS in nursing in 2009. So that's repotting and thinking out of the box. A little different than just opting in. But using that type of power that you have to decide, whether it's through technology, whether it's through, um, it, it is a sense of empowerment that I can't, uh, I can't emphasize enough. And he's the reason that I get to do things like this. Although he's still obnoxious because he's acing all of his, his <laughs> courses. So, you know, I got to work at the Bell System and be one of those uh, first pole climbers out there. I've put in telephones. And that became, it was because of a graduate of Occidental. Um, Jerome Hull, who was the um, CEO and had an interest in Oxy, and also because the phone company really messed up because they had a consent decree where they were hiring, uh, because they were hiring women to be operators with their degrees and men to be managers. Um, and uh, in 1974, uh, another Oxy grad came up and said, Pat, you've got to go in there. There's a woman here. She's interviewing for uh, Pacific Telephone. And oh my God, you can get 500, you guys are laughing, $500 a month. I am going to work there and I'm going to get $500 a month. And I, you know, I went in and sure enough, I got to go climb telephone poles and be a foreman um, for $710 a month. I just want to tell you, it's a really big buck. Um, I went to IBM. I worked with uh, women in technology. Um, I didn't get the shirts in men's sizes. There were men who said, well, that's really sexist. And I said, well, when IBM decides to get shirts in our sizes when they have a conference, it'd be really nice. So these are all in women's sizes. Um, one of the things I'll tell you is a fine line in being lawless. And, if, and I came pretty close to that line a couple times. And uh, I just warn you, it is, not, it is career limiting for men or women to take your glasses off and punctuate a point by hitting your boss in the chest. <laughs> um, worked on the Sun Foundation. At Sun, we decided, this was our flexible schedule, that we couldn't afford to have a chair for every person who was in Sun. And so we decided, this was Scott's idea, that we would have 1.3 persons per seat. And he <laughs> wanted people to work at home. And we would have, and this is before the gas crisis, we were all doing well, but he said, I think we should get more productivity than what we have. And we got these great technologies and set it up so people can work at home and then I don't have to buy as many seats for people to sit in. So that's what I think about in opting in. Okay? At uh, salesforce.com, we did something that was very different where we didn't get a lot of vacation, 
but we did get 1% of our time to give to our community. Now think about that one. So we had one group, 1% 1 of your time, if you figure out over the course of a year, is about six days a year. Now I did active reading, but some of my, my uh, colleagues uh, went to Bosnia, they were from Europe, and they went to Bosnia and built a, an orphanage. The point is, in opting in, different things can help change the world by giving your time. If every corporation did that, what a difference it would make. Now, Mark Benioff, who is a brilliant guy, also said we're going to get 80% of our equity, which he did when it was a penny a share, and now look at it where it is. And so he had a foundation that took off. And one per he endeavored, it wasn't a commitment, but to give 1% of his revenues. Think about the change that you get and how easy it is to, to uh, change your environment. Not exactly what we're talking about with opting in, but it's very important to think about that type of creative think that is different than just going in and saying, I'm punching a card. I don't pay people to punch a time card. Um, at Surf Control, I did this. I was a British company and, uh, and also at, uh, at uh, Log Logic. What I have now done is my folks do not have to be at the office at all. You have to arrange it with your boss because you have to be in good standing. But uh, I would say that on any given day, um, we don't have, um, I would say, 70% of our employees are there. And when the gas crisis hit, people, and we have terrible roads up there, we're uh, staying at home. And it doesn't matter because we've got video, con you know, you got, um, uh, and I, you could do video conferencing from your PC, but you can actually do conference calls and you can do text conferencing so you can be tied together. Those are things that allow people to work on their pace. Now, I do have employees who will say, I need to come to the office. Why is that? I'd like to be home. They say, well, I've got three kids and I'd like to not be at home. So, you know, <laughs> Being flexible means doing that. One of the women who works for me from, uh, from the Netherlands, Harvard MBA, worked in Japan, really terrific, uh, just had her third child. Um, her second child she had, she took two weeks off. I said, Dominique, you know, you can take more time than that. She said, but you know, this parenting time, she said, I took two weeks off and my husband took two months off. He shares in the responsibilities. This time he took two weeks off and I got to take two months off. Do you see, those are different flexible arrangements. And she does have her Blackberry. Here's another thought. When you're with your partner, do not sleep with your Blackberry. <laughs> it, it does not cause bliss among your, uh, with your spouse. Um, just FYI. <laughs> and if he says some night when you're under the sheets going like this, and he says, what are you doing <laughs> over there? Um, turn the light off very quickly and slide it in the side of the bed. <laughs> the point is here that all of these places, they weren't uh, the legal field, but they are a bunch of people who thought differently about things. And we're not all Einsteins, but they could see that there's a way to do stuff. And that's really what we're here to talk about. And I'm, I've told you about all of this. Um, and I'll just tell you this bit here. If you're out, some of you who are graduated in 2009, or if you graduated in uh, 1958, and you're thinking about doing something new, because folks don't just retire these days, they repot. Uh, not that kind, but they um, <laughs> get with a company or a firm or a group, an organization whose values are similar to yours. I think some of the most dissatisfaction I see from employees is when they get misaligned, and they thought it was going to be some way, or worse yet, like uh, some people who get into relationships, they thought they could change the person uh, and, uh, and it would all work out. You're not going to change it, so join something that you, you fit in. Think about the goals and think about those individuals and how you can make them successful. And that's how you can build programs like opting in because I've got a lot of very creative folks who will think of how to, how to uh, engender it. I've got a team of engineers who have decided that it is better to eat together every night because they're all young and we just spend the time and they've been so creative in putting things out. But they can also take long times off. You do, you can, and you can do those things. You can change your work week. Um, be lawful, but be creative. Lou Gerstner once told me I was uninhibited and unmanageable. And um, 
I said, thank you. And uh, he said, go hire some more people like yourself. So, uh, but don't do it unless you're doing well in what you're doing. Do you, do you follow, follow me? Because folks who lead the way but are also not making it at work, have you, I've known folks like that. They will be the first people to be fired or laid off. Because when you're taking on a social cause like Pat, I bet you were in pretty good standing when you did this. We can all joke about it, but if she hadn't been able to get those billable hours and having folks redact things for you and such and such, you, she wouldn't have been able to lead that. So make sure that before you pick up your cause that you are in like Flint, that you're doing your job. You're not there to do a social change effort. It's, it's not a democracy. It's about, in business anyway, and in profit business, it's about making money. And don't forget it. And even I, who am a cupcake, uh, some, most of the time, it will tell you that, it's, uh, that that's how you have to run it. Remember that. Um, always have a plan. So if you've got an idea, and you've, you've, maybe it's come because you have a need to do something, don't go at it like saying, this is really screwed up. I can't make this work. I've got a baby, don't you see? I've got to do this. That's probably not going to win your boss's heart, particularly if he's a grumpy 60-year-old who doesn't understand why women are working anyway. That's what I ran into. If you go in and say, how can I make your life better? I could get started on this earlier, and uh, it'll help me out to look at it differently. And then um, give, um, and don't be negatively transparent about their reaction. If you go out and you say, let me tell you what an idiot this guy was, or eat to his face. Don't ever tell your boss they're an idiot to their face, even if you think they are. Hold it in. But um, share the success. If you pull it off, then tell HR that what a great idea that we had in letting Marie Week work her own flexible schedule and that they should do it. And I can tell you now that if you go to IBM, you'll hear people say, wow, we had this great program and let me tell you what we did. And they had nothing to do with it. It was all a wild idea of someone who had a need. Does that, does that make sense? Do it within the law. Don't limit your flexibility or work life to one gender. And remember that balance is defined by the individual. And if you lead with work life balance when you're interviewing for jobs, all of you who are about to graduate, you will put a big red flag up, I think. Is that right? Oh, I disagree with that. But I think you can do it. Well, we can talk about it. You have to, you, if you're, it depends on your environment. If you're going to work for Patagonia or you're going to work for um, if you're working for my company, you can talk about that, but folks will generally say, I got it and we have that. We're just looking for, are you interested in this job? That's, what, that's the point I, I'm making. And then opt in. And while you're doing it, have some fun and change the world. So that's my story. Thank you very much. And we have the winning table. If everybody will look under their spots, there is a BMW 3 Series. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> That's a lie. I, I'm just kidding. <laughs>
I would not have gotten where I was. And I had to, there was a conformance, even though I immediately started, do, did my work. So she's right, when you've got bargaining power, but if you're just one person standing there saying, I want a job, and, you, um, and you're talking to, I don't know, some dictator, you, and, and maybe you have, thank you. That'd be values. a senior partner law firm. You know um. what I mean, so, okay. Go ahead. Okay, so here's what I want you to think about. Change is like heaven. Everybody wants to go there, nobody wants to die. Okay, think about that. That's really where we come from. We want to make change, but we don't, you make the change first. Okay, you do it because then I can follow it. What we want you guys to talk about is how we can really make change. What inspires people to change? What are the changes that need to be made? How do we respond to the Gen Yers who are coming into the workplace, the baby boomers who aren't leaving the workplace? How do we make that workplace acceptable to them and a place that they want to be, that you want to be for those of you who fall into those groups. The rest of us are just there. there.